Star Wars, the whole stack they gave a teaser. I showed a couple new droids, a couple new landscapes. Uh, it got the internet very excited. People were very excited. So they released a teaser trailer, which is about two minutes. Up a lot of special effects stuff. So I would say 75% of the trailer was really just kind of cool visual shots and, and flash and stuff. You do get to see some of the some of the new characters are a little longer. Of course, now you you, you see Hans and Chewie. You got to see the bad guy's face and kind of his setup. You got to see a lot of the new stormtroopers. I really don't know the premise other than. You know, it's like 30 or 40 years past the first one, and... Uh, yeah, remind remind the viewer who has no idea about this universe, which, by the way, that viewer is probably 0.0003%. But remind yeah. the viewer, where are we at on the timeline of this universe, and where will okay, we be? Okay, so, uh, 1, 2, and 3, 1, 2, and 3, which came out about 10, 15 years ago, uh, took place with Anakin, Anakin Skywalker, kind of his rise and fall, which was, you know, the Jedi of this teaching order... And this is where we're kind of seeing into that. And then you get this, you get this prodigy Jedi who is kind of really torn and childish. But there's kind of a darkness happening in the universe, but you know, it hasn't really risen yet. Because of Anakin and, 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 and his decision-making, he becomes like the number one muscle of the bad guys. And then you jump ahead 20 years, and then you have 4, 5, and 6. And 4, 5, and 6 are basically the, the darkness has risen to power. It's kind of totalitarian, kind of... Um, Barack Obama and his his ideal uh, leadership <laughs> role, Emperor Palpatine. The funny thing is that liberals were always making fun of George Bush. Bush, in actual, Bush. In, in actuality, this would be the direction that, that would start with this, a senator going to emperor, which is basically what we have in, in general. Yeah, no, but anyway. I've actually, I've actually never put that together. That's a pretty accurate parallel. Anyway, moving forward. So now we're at three, four, five, and six. And, you know, you have the good people who have really no hope and the rebels and – um, they draft the daughter and the son of this dude from one, two, and three. He's the bad guy, Darth Vader now. And based upon, like, you know, they just bubble gum and, and duct tape this thing together and just win. And deep. I guess that Empire, even though we enlist in so many stories that they want to continue, we saw the fall of the Empire, which is an awesome thing, but it didn't completely get eliminated. So I guess there was some remnants of it kind of pop, like, you know, across the galaxy and they kind of cobbled together. And my take, based on what I read and what I've seen in the trailer, is that it's kind of risen up again. Well, they're bringing the old classics back, but my take is somebody's kid, Luke, Leia, Han, somebody, somebody's kid's involved. Uh, you got like a, you got like a turncoat. It looks like a turncoat coat stormtrooper who goes from being a bad guy to, uh, you know, being a good guy. Which, which, which also, you know, I, I kind of want to touch on this stuff. It's not an annoyance, it's just an observation. Um, you know, Star Trek and Star Wars both have African American characters in the show, uh, which is in and of itself not an issue for me. The issue is that in Star Trek they have a uh, black uh, cl- uh, uh, Vulcan, and right. uh, that to me was crazy because the you, you, you're an atheist, which I'm not, but even I believe in uh, adaptation. Um, if you believe that you know the circumstances of a person's ethnicity comes from their their genes and where they lived and, you know, hundreds of years of, of certain geo- or, uh, geographical conditions. You're telling me that you have the exact same geographical conditions. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And what, what it was, what it was, was political correct, pandering, yeah. out, out trump the purity of, of the actual story. And yeah. that, that happens all too often. And I, and I, yeah, well, I mean, even, I, and, your, even your most liberal viewer, I bet, would agree with that if he actually has any respect for the storyline. It's just... It's just a perversion of the storyline. Well, no to, to, address, to address that and then to actually put it on the shelf and say there's so much suspension of disbelief that goes into science fiction, it's just that one thing because I know what it is. drives me nuts. It's like if they want to – it just happens all the time. It drives me nuts because if you're actually being uh, conscious of, well, okay, this is a genre and this is a history, well, then you just decide to – and if you want to make one of the stormtroopers black, uh, it's not it, that's not really such an issue for me, but the fact that you know, we are humans living on Earth, and this is how, uh, you know, the African-American race uh, adapted and became. The circumstances wouldn't, if you're, if you're coming at it from, like, an atheistic evolutionary standpoint, circumstances wouldn't be the same on Earth as they would all over the galaxy. So you wouldn't have Chinese, white, I mean, you wouldn't even have white uh, necessarily. You know what's interesting about this is it's just one more confinement to, to uh political correct pandering in our society, you, you obviously see that in some substantive areas, politically, educationally, but even in creative areas where, you know, somebody has, somebody has spent the time putting the parameters and the framework together in this universe, and it's very, very thoughtful, it's very intriguing, a vast fandom, and then somebody has to just wedge or crowbar 
some nonsense into that world, and that's really what you're getting at. It's not even so much that, like you said, you have to suspend belief all over the place, but it's more just like the sand in the oyster. It's like everything has to bow or cowtail to this nonsense, and the real truth of it is, is everybody's actually equally annoyed by it. I actually think even possibly right and left just depends on the circumstance. Everybody is just silently uh, subservient to it. I'll say I wanted to get to something that you, that you said that really struck my interest. I love that, this idea of exploring the lingering sort of fractions, the fallout of, of like a fascistic totalitarian regime that has been brought to its knees. I love that because I'm a big student of history. And what I've learned, and quite frankly, if you look at the timeline of history, if you look at human history, there is this evil. It's, it's very Sauron or whatever that, that guy is. Sauron and Sauron. Yes. yes. You know, it, it, might, it might take a beat down. It might uh, fall apart in certain civilizations. It might get discredited in certain generations. But that seed within the human being, and what I'm talking about in, in this case is just the lust control people's lives, the lust to take power and take statist strong arm tactics. And just bring people into submission, almost just just because you can. Sometimes I get the impression that's almost the ends of, of the means. This is true what they're depicting here. Even if you beat it, like even if you break its back, you have to hunt down every single seed from this ideology and burn it. Because if it's yeah. what, what happened in Europe, what happened Lenin and, and Stalin's communism when the back was broken in that ideology in Europe. All those professors hopped on a plane or hopped on a boat. They took tenure here in, this, in, in our American universities where we were open-minded, and they just started spewing crap from the, from the bully pulpit. And generation after generation after generation was whittled away, whittled away, whittled away. And so that's the thing. It's like a disease. It's like cancer. You know, you got cancer in your body, and you have to go after all of it. You can't let any of it out. And I think that's a good analogy. So I think that potentially could be – where this movie goes it has a chance of going there because right we we've we've just seen darth vader evil or whatever was vanquished or or seemingly vanquished right but little little pieces little offshoot roots or whatever scattered across this universe that people love and and we're going to get to see what happens if you kind of rest on your rest on your freedom loins if you will you know what i mean just stop and and bask these stories are always about good versus evil, and that's bad. The good people want freedom. That's why I find so funny about so many movies is that they make so much money and so many people go to see them. But the underlying story, the moral of the story that's trying to be told to you, or maybe not even trying to be told to you, but the moral of the story you're supposed to be taking away is that these big regimes making every little decision for you, uh, you know, with the thumb on top of your life controlling you, this is bad. And these rebels are the good guys trying to stop this from happening. And these people don't take that away. They don't again, see. again, car- compartmentalized ideology. I have never been able to understand it. And you're right. And I also, and we've talked about this before in our like pop culture dialogue. But what's interesting is the ones that leave that formula, that formula you just laid out, good versus evil. Uh, you know, the rebels are trying to push back on on the powerful status. If you don't use that formula, it's not an interesting story, and it generally fails at the box office. There's, that's the difference between what I can gather of the cartoons from when we were kids um, in the 80s and the early 90s, which was there was right, right and wrong, good versus evil, and a lot of that's gone in the cartoons now. That's something, if you look back and watch them, the stories for the most part, even though the drawings may be pretty rudimentary and, may, and maybe aren't so great, the, the story itself is very the Star Wars, like good versus evil, bad, you know, bad and and there's a lot, not nearly as much blood, maybe, but you can you can glean that. So our generation probably is one of the last that still have it. Long live the new media. College, culture, dot net.